today we'll be going over troubleshooting USB and RS-232 connection issues. Advanced motion controls, Digiflex performance, digital servo drives connect to driveware via either USB or RS-232 for commissioning and configuration. This video provides instructions on how to troubleshoot USB and RS-232 connection issues. Please note that sections of this application note require knowledge of the parts and devices used within your computer and the software tools used to manage them. If you are not familiar with certain aspects of your computer, you may need to consult your IT department. This video is based on App Note 50, Troubleshooting USB and RS-232 Connection Issues. This application note can be downloaded from our website. You will first need to download driveware from our website. The first page of the drive data sheet you are using will tell you whether you are using a drive that uses USB for configuration or RS-232. First, USB. Before continuing, make sure logic power is supplied to the drive that you are using. Here you can see that 24 volt is supplied to the drive via the two position Phoenix connector. The LED next to the power label is illuminated green, indicating logic power is applied. Next, we're going to plug in our USB cable. The USB cable shown in A will be plugged into the USB port shown on B. In C, we're just showing it plugged in from a different perspective. Here's a USB port for the drive that we will be using for today's video. Next, we're going to carefully plug in the USB cable. Once it's plugged in properly, the LED will illuminate green. Click on the driveware icon from your desktop to open driveware. Now that we've applied power to the drive and opened driveware, we're going to attempt to connect via USB. First, we're going to click on the connect button within driveware. That will bring up a separate dialog box. For the interface, we're going to choose USB. Next, we're going to click the icon next to the drive address. This should populate the serial number of the drive under USB device. Once this is done, we're going to click Connect in the lower left-hand corner. As you do this, you will see in the lower right-hand corner of driveware that it will switch from not connected to connected. This is a successful connection via USB. If driveware did not find a drive for selection, you will need to utilize the Device Manager tool on the PC in use to troubleshoot the issue. We're going to use the Device Manager on our PC and we're going to identify the device and then unplug it and plug it back in so you can see it disappear and reappear. In this particular case, my computer is calling it USB to serial converter. Yours might label it something different. You're going to open the Device Manager from the Run menu on your PC. And we're just going to expand this window so we can see all the devices attached to it. So in this case, my drive is being titled USB Serial Converter. I'm going to unplug this device. And then I'm going to plug it back in. And you can see that it shows back up here. So this is a good way to see if your computer is actually seeing your USB device. You can also use the Device Manager to check if your USB drivers are current. Right-click on the USB port that is connected to your drive. Select Update Driver. Your computer will check if the drivers are current and report back. In this case, you can see that the best drivers for your device are already installed. If your USB device doesn't appear in the Device Manager, there may be an issue with the drive or the USB cable. Try using a different USB cable or a different PC. Otherwise, please proceed to the next step. If your USB device shows up as unknown device or as MC servo drive, as shown below, you will need to uninstall the device and scan for hardware so that the device shows up as a USB device. We're going to once again start with the Device Manager. I'm going to open the Device Manager, 
Expand the window so we can see all of the USB ports. We're going to right click and choose Uninstall Device. Click on Uninstall. You can see it has been removed. Next we're going to go to Action and scan for hardware changes. You can see it's setting up the device. And in a moment here, you'll see it reappear. You can see now that the device is ready. This is how you uninstall and scan for hardware changes. When your USB device shows up as it should in the device manager, you should be able to connect as shown in the previous successful connection video. If you are still not able to connect after trying the methods above, please contact the factory. Next, we'll be going over RS-232. If you're using a panel mount drive, make sure you are using a straight serial cable versus a null modem or crossover cable. For a straight serial cable, RX is connected to RX and TX is connected to TX as shown below. It's important to note that the image above only shows a straight through cable it is not portraying the RS-232 ports on AMC's drives. The image to the right shows the pinouts for the AMC serial COM port. Skip to native serial port connections if your computer has a native serial port. Many computers do not have a native serial port. In this case, you will need to use a USB to serial converter. If you are using a USB to serial converter, the same troubleshooting procedures given below apply. However, you will be plugging into a USB port instead of a native serial port. The table below shows a list of specific models that have been tested to work well with Digiflex performance servo drives. Once you've made sure that logic power is supplied, you're going to plug in the USB to serial converter to your computer. You're going to plug the other end into your serial cable that is then connected to the drive. Plug the USB to serial converter into one of the USB ports on your computer as shown previously. When you do so, the following message should appear confirming the drivers were installed correctly. You can also look at the communication port for your USB to serial converter to verify it is working. This is illustrated below. First, we're going to open the Device Manager. We're going to expand the COM ports window so we can see our USB to serial converter. I'm going to right click on this and choose Properties. Here we can see that it reports this device is working properly. If the drivers do not install successfully as shown below, go directly to the device manufacturer's website and download the necessary drivers. If you are still not successful, try using one of the recommended USB to serial converters. If you're still unable to successfully confirm that the COM port associated with the device is working, request help from your IT personnel. For native serial port connections, you're simply going to plug in your RS-232 cable directly to the COM port on your amplifier, as shown in this slide. Make sure the port the drive is plugged into is less than COM8. Drive work cannot recognize a COM port higher than 8. The COM port designation can be changed by opening the Device Manager on the PC. Right-click on the port you wish to change and select Properties. Click on the Port Settings tab and select Advanced. Choose the COM port number that you wish to use from the drop-down menu and select OK. Do not change any of the other default settings for the port. This is how you change your COM port. First, we're going to open the Device Manager. We're going to expand the ports and choose the port that we wish to change. Select Properties. Going to go to Port Settings. Click on Advanced and we're going to choose another COM port that isn't already in use. I'm choosing COM1. Say OK. And then you can see that it changed from COM5 to COM1. This video is going to show a successful connection via RS-232. 
First, we're going to open DriveWare. We're going to click Connect. That's going to bring up the following screen. Once you choose the interface of RS-232, the default settings for drive address and baud rate will populate. Next, you're going to select your serial port. Please notice in the lower right-hand corner of DriveWare where it says Not Connected. Once we connect, this will change to Connected. That was a successful connection via RS-232. DriveWare provides a feature to auto-detect the drive when connecting serially. This allows DriveWare to search all COM ports, drive addresses, and baud rates. The following videos will show samples of utilizing the auto-detect feature. We're going to utilize the auto-detect feature in DriveWare to find a drive. We already have DriveWare open, so we're just going to go ahead and click on Connect. Going to click Connect again. You can see that DriveWare is reporting that it could not connect to the drive. Next, we're going to try to use the Auto Detect. We click on Auto Detect. It's going to bring up the following screen. If you know the scan range, you can specify it here. Otherwise, you can just leave the defaults provided from DriveWare. During the scan, it's going to check all drive addresses, COM ports, and baud rates to locate the drive. This is a rather lengthy process, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward. So we went through COM1 and now we're searching on COM2. You can see it found the drive on COM2. We have the drive address, COM port, and baud rate. We're going to apply these settings. This will populate the settings back to the connect screen. We're going to hit connect again. You can see in the lower right hand corner of DriveWare that it goes from not connected to connected. You have now successfully found your drive and connected to it. We're going to use the auto detect feature within DriveWare to find a drive. In this case, we know the COM port, but we do not know the address or baud rate. Going to open up DriveWare, click on Connect, click Connect again. You can see that DriveWare is reporting that it could not connect to the drive. We're going to try Auto Detect. So in the scan screen, because we know what the COM port is, we're going to go ahead and change it here so we're only looking at that COM port. Next, we're going to press Start Scan. So it's going to go through this COM port and look for the all drive addresses and baud rates. This is a little bit lengthy, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward. So it's still searching on COM3. You can see that it found the drive. Drive address is 1 and it reports the baud rate here as well. We're going to go ahead and click on Apply Settings. That's going to populate the drive address and the baud rate to the connection screen. We're going to click Connect again and you can see in the lower right hand corner of DriveWare that it changes from Not Connected to Connected. You are now successfully connected to your drive. We're going to show an unsuccessful connection via RS-232. First, we're going to open DriveWare. We're going to click Connect. We're going to click Connect again. DriveWare is reporting that it could not find the drive. Next, we're going to utilize the Auto Detect feature to attempt to find the drive. So we're going to go ahead and put in our scan range and any other information we know and we're going to click on Start Scan. So you can see that DriveWare is starting to scan on COM port 1. So we're approaching the end of our scan here. And you can see that DriveWare is reporting that it could not find a drive and it's asking you to check the LED for status. 
This shows an unsuccessful connection via RS-232. If you are still not able to connect, doing a loopback test is a great way to check your COM ports. First, make sure your loopback connector is plugged into the port you want to check. You will also need to know the COM port number. Next, I utilized Google to find a free loopback test program. I downloaded the one I found from hosenose.com and reviewed the information provided on how to use the software. Next, I'm going to open the program. You can see in this screen we need to put in our COM port and baud rate. And once we've done that, we're going to open the port. You can see now the port is open. Click on loop back test. And you can see that the loop back test succeeded. So there's no issues with this port. Next, we're going to look at a couple of other features. You can also send specific text via this program. I'm going to type in something and when I hit enter, it's going to send it out to the port and you can see that it responded. You can also send continuous text. So now we have used this program to successfully check our port so we know the port we're using is good. Now we're going to choose the incorrect COM port. We're going to do this so we can see what an unsuccessful loopback test is. We're going to go ahead and choose COM1. We're going to open the port and we're going to do a loopback test. In this case, you can see it says loopback test failed. So if we have this plugged into an actual port we were testing, and this came back, it would tell you that something is wrong with that port and you would need to consult further with your IT personnel. If you're still not able to connect after trying the methods above, please contact the factory.